What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here with your third stimulus check update that will be $1,400. In this video, we're going to hear from the new Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, who is also the former Federal Reserve Chairman. So she pretty much knows what's going on with the economy and with money. She's the new Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin. We're going to go to her on the third stimulus check, third stimulus check package, and also future stimulus packages upcoming after that. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates and click the bell icon so you get notifications when we go live with new videos. On the third stimulus check package, we also cover mortgage and rental assistance on this video, on this channel, student loan forgiveness, social security increases, child tax credit increases, and all the different buckets of money that you can claim through these additional stimulus packages that are coming out. And if you can, give this video a like down below. It really helps out our channel. All right, let's jump on over to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen on the third stimulus check package. President Biden and Democrats are pushing forward with this $1.9 trillion relief package. But as you know, one of your predecessors from the Clinton and Obama administration, Larry Summers, suggested that it's just too big. It would flood the economy with too much money, and that could lead to rising inflation. Quote, Whereas the Obama stimulus was about half as large as the output shortfall, the proposed Biden stimulus is three times as large as the projected shortfall. Why is Summers wrong? Why are you confident this will not cause rising inflation? Well, first, Jake, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. Um, I, I think the risks here, you know, as Treasury Secretary, I have to worry about all of the risks to the economy. And the most important risk is that um, we leave workers and communities scarred by the pandemic and the economic toll that, it, that it's taken, that we don't do enough to address the pandemic and the public health issues, that we don't get our kids back to school. We have 10 million um, Americans who are unemployed, another 4 million who have dropped out of the labor force, um, particularly women who have childcare responsibilities. We need to reopen our schools. Also, I want to touch on that. We had a recent report that I seen that shows that we are still at 10 million more unemployed people right now than at pre-pandemic levels. So 10 million more people are unemployed now than before the pandemic hit. So yeah, it's still uh, it's still pretty bad out there. We need to reopen our schools, make sure that children aren't falling behind, um, provide help. We already have too, way too many small businesses that are closing. We need to provide help to get them to the other side. And we've already seen 1.3 million state and local government workers, first responders, policemen, firemen, who have lost their jobs, and we need to get them back on the payroll. Um, and we, people are on the verge of uh, losing the roofs over their heads. Um, the package provides rental assistance. Um, we have 24 million adults and 12 million children that are, are going hungry every day, and we need to provide them with food. Um, we have people suffering particularly particularly mm -hmm. low-wage workers and um, minorities, and through absolutely no fault of their own, we have to get them to the other side and make sure this doesn't take a permanent right. toll um, on their lives. So we need a package that's big enough to address this full range of needs. And I believe that the American Rescue Plan is up to the job. Um, in my predecessor, you know, has indicated that there's a chance that this will cause inflation to rise. And that's also a risk that we have to consider. I've spent many years studying inflation and worrying about inflation. And I can tell you, we have the tools to deal with that risk if it materializes. But um, we face a huge economic challenge here mm -hmm. and tremendous suffering in the country. We've got to address that. That's the biggest risk. And, and as you noted, the unemployment rate is falling, and that does not take into account the millions of Americans who have left the labor force completely during the pandemic. I think 400,000 or so 
uh, in the la latest jobs report, just gave up looking. Um, after the Great Recession, it, it took almost seven years to get employment numbers back to where they were. How long do you think it will take now to fully recover all the jobs we lost during this pandemic, including uh, all the people who are jobless and have l given up? That's a good point there. He says that when the Great Recession, which was the 2008-2009 uh, crisis, market crash, and recession, took seven years to our job level to get back to where we were. And frankly, a lot of economists say because we didn't pass enough stimulus back then. Now, in fairness, stimulus was kind of a relatively new thing back then. I think Obama had the stimulus checks of $300 if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. I'm sure you will. Um, but yeah, I mean, stimulus checks are much larger than they were now. I mean, we've already had $1,800 in stimulus checks, and we're going to have another $1,400 coming now from the third stimulus package. But back then, 2008-2009, that was really one of the first rounds of stimulus. And now the Fed and the Treasury and really Congress has shown that Stimulus is actually a great way to get our economy out of recessions and not have them take seven years. And this is why Biden has said that there will be stimulus checks and stimulus packages until the pandemic is over, because, well, if we don't do that, we'll have seven years of recovery as opposed to maybe half that time or a third of that time. Well, um, you know, the Congressional Budget Office um, issued a, a, an analysis recently, and it showed that if we don't provide additional support, um, the unemployment rate is going to stay elevated for years to come. It would take to, till 2025 in order to get the unemployment rate down to 4 percent again. We would have a long, slow recovery like we had after the financial crisis. But this package is going to really speed recovery. And analysis by Moody's and economists at the Brookings Institution show that very clearly, that we will get people back to work much sooner with this, with this uh, package. And that, that's really critically important. There's absolutely no reason why we should um, suffer through a long, slow recovery. Do you have a timeline, though, for full for full uh, reemployment? Well, I, I I would expect that if this package is passed, that um, we would get back to full employment next year. One of the main discussions right now in the legislation is about who should receive the direct payments from the stimulus package. Almost every senator uh, agreed with a resolution that passed on Thursday to say that upper income taxpayers should not get direct payments. They did not define what constitutes an upper income taxpayer, uh, which maybe is why it was so easy for them to, to pass it. What do you think the cutoff should be? Uh, 50,000, 75,000, where do you come down? So that's the key there. The amendment was passed in the Senate 99 to one. I believe that Bernie Sanders was the only one that voted against this to basically have an income cutoff that's going to be redefined to not have higher earning higher earning income taxpayers in there, but they didn't define the amount. So that's really interesting. So we're going to be seeing what that amount will be probably within the next 24 hours. 1,000, 75,000, where do you come down? Well, President Biden is certainly willing to work with members of Congress to define what's fair, and he wouldn't want to see... Um, a household making over $300,000 receive these payments. But you th if you think about an elementary school teacher or policeman making $60,000 a year and um, faced with children who were out of school and um, people who may have had to withdraw from the labor force uh, in order to take care of them and many um, extra burdens, I, I would he thinks, and I would certainly agree, that it's appropriate for people there to get support. So um, the exact details of how it should be targeted are to be determined. But um, struggling middle class families n need need help too. So you're not. So you definitely think higher than fifty thousand per individual, but you're not necessarily willing to commit to seventy five thousand. Is what I'm hearing. 
Yeah, I, you know, I think the details can be um, worked out, and the president is um, certainly willing to work with Congress to find find a good structure for these payments. So the Washington Post editorial board is still pushing for a bipartisan deal. They wrote just yesterday, quote, Biden should exhaust the possibilities for compromise on COVID relief. Um, but President Biden has also signaled he's ready to move forward without Republicans. Are you, is the administration willing to pass this relief package with zero Republican votes in the Senate, zero Republican votes in the House? By the way, you can tell me if you think this is the right decision down below in the comments, but President Biden is saying that he's going to move forward without Republican support for at least this stimulus check package. Who knows about the fourth stimulus check package that's already been announced, the infrastructure slash build back better package. But if they didn't move forward with uh, out Republican support right now, we would likely have weeks of negotiating between Republicans and Democrats to iron out all the details and get enough support from the Republicans to pass the third stimulus check package. So as they're moving forward without them, this basically would cut off several weeks of uh, negotiation time between the two parties. But, you know, Republicans will say, well, this is only a Democratic bill. Republicans aren't OK with it. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. President Biden is strongly committed to working with all members of Congress in order to try to craft a package that addresses the needs of the American people. And uh, as you know, he's met with uh, Republicans who um, are interested in working with him to craft a proposal. Um, the details of the package certainly um, can, can be negotiated over. Uh, to try to craft something that's broadly acceptable. But we need a big package, and we need to get this done quickly. And um, those are things that the president is really committed to. So he, he wants to make sure that all the needs of the American people are addressed. Um, it's important to, do, to extend unemployment insurance. It's important to have enough money to distribute uh, the vaccine. But there are many more needs out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wants a package that addresses um, rental assistance so people have roofs over their head, mm -hmm. um, food that they have enough to eat, and the full range, the full range of um, problems facing Americans. You met with regulators <clears throat> from the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Federal Reserve on Thursday about GameStop and other stocks after day traders drove the prices to soar and then crash. Uh, your department says that the market's, quote, core infrastructure was resilient, unquote. Does that mean you think new regulations are not necessary? Well, um, you know, first, the first thing is that we really need to understand exactly what happened. And uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission is working hard to assemble a report that gives us the facts. And when we have them, um, we can look at uh, whether or not there uh, were issues that need to be addressed through new policy or regulations. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure the markets function efficiently, that um, investors are protected, and also that they understand the risks that they face um, when they engage in trading. Mm -hmm. And all of that will be reviewed. Well, let me ask you, because you, you made more than $7 million in recent years giving speeches to Wall Street banks, corporations, industry groups, including Citadel, a hedge fund that recently bailed out a GameStop short seller. You must know that a lot of people who pay these high sums of money for speeches, like from experts such as you, are hoping not just to hear a good speech, but hoping to get friendly treatment down the line. Well, I have an ethics agreement that um, I signed that we carefully considered um, whether or not there could be conflicts of interest, and I will religiously adhere to that agreement. And at every step along the way, I've consulted with ethics um, lawyers at the Treasury Department and will certainly abide by my ethics obligations. Man, these Treasury Secretaries are worth a lot of money. As you can see here, Steve Mnuchin, who was the previous Treasury Secretary, his net worth is about $300 million. Dollars. That's a lot of cheddar. 
Now, uh, wow, $300 million. That's crazy. Now, remember, Janet Yellen kind of got all this money before she was Treasury Secretary. She just came in there this week. But she was the Federal Reserve Chairman previously. But a lot of former presidents and top people, such as Federal Reserve Chairman and Treasury Secretaries, they get paid a lot of money for speeches. We've seen this from previous presidents, uh, President Obama, President Clinton, President Bush, make millions of dollars uh, doing speeches, which is kind of crazy. So let me know your thoughts on the third stimulus check package. They have passed the initial portion of it with the reconciliation part of the bill. And we're going to have some breaking news tomorrow morning, uh, Monday morning. And I already have some information coming through on my desk that I will have for you on Monday morning. There will not be an 11 p.m. video tonight because of the Super Bowl. I'm filming this video right before the Super Bowl starts because, you know, I have to film these videos about an hour and a half to two hours before because of all the processing and editing and uploading. All that stuff takes a little bit of time. So I will see you again in the morning. Make sure you subscribe down below and click the bell icon so you get notifications. New videos come out every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 8 p.m., and 11 p.m., uh, except for tonight. No 11 p.m. Thanks, guys. You can click this top video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video teaches you how to start your own business selling products on Amazon FBA. I have dozens of students that have replaced their 9-to-5 income selling products on Amazon, and I teach them how to do that. Click on one of those videos to watch them next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.